What's going on everybody? It's Chris. Welcome back to another simulation. We're taking a look at the 2020 Miami Hurricanes against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish using the real rosters of both teams. The reason why I want to do this one is because there is a little bit of buzz that maybe these two teams could face each other this season with the changes in the schedule and I'll get to that in a little bit. But first of all, go ahead and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. We're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers. And just want to thank everybody for the support there. And if you have any comments on this, go ahead and drop in the comments. Or if you want to talk about the schedule, maybe your memories of this rivalry, anything you want to hear, I definitely want to hear it. So drop in the comments. So here we go. We're going to take a look at these guys, both teams for one quarter of action. Do that for just a sneak peek of the season. Maybe they face each other. Maybe they don't. But just again, it's a way to look at the both teams, what they have on the rosters, and maybe... If they face each other, what it could possibly look like. See Jalen Knighton back here to return the ball. Good to see they're involved in the running game and in the return game. And those are things I expect to see for him during his freshman year. But guys, I know you guys want to think about this rivalry. It's gone on the first played in 1955. They played a bunch of big games in the 80s and I know everybody remembers that last game they played each other in 2017 at Hard Rock Stadium Miami was ranked 6 Notre Dame 3 huge game Miami comes away with a 41-8 win it was the maybe the biggest home win or maybe the biggest win certainly one of the best atmospheres over the last 15 years for the program and I know many of you, if you guys went to the game, you certainly remember how loud it was. It's a great run by De'Eric King. That's a huge run for him. Again, you see him make his moves. He shows that dual threat ability. Very good passer, but he has that ability to make plays when he gets out and run. And you see it there. Gets off a tackle, but also had that juke move. Great to see. Adds another element. That's number four. That's a newcomer for Notre Dame. Nick McLeod gave him number four. Not sure what number he's going to wear. Transfer from NC State. Shout out to Notre Dame fans. If you guys are here as well, to check out your squad. But here we go. One thing with Miami's offense, and you're seeing it right here. With the three receivers off to the left, one to the right. And that's the thing. You're, you're going to see stuff like that. The offense is set up. It's going to be a spread, little air raid attack, things like that. That's where Rhett Lashley's offense is based out of. You see him huddling here. You're going to see a faster pace offense during the season. It's just tough to replicate that here. It's a nice pass over the middle. And this will move the chains again as the tackle is going to be made at the 49ers 39. So there we go, Mike Harley over the middle. Good catch by him. The thing that stands out to me about Notre Dame's defense is a number of guys returning. I think it would certainly be a challenge for Miami if these two teams face each other. And the reason why there's a little bit of discussion is because ACC is expected to cancel all of their non-conference games. After the Big Ten made their announcement, others' conference, I would assume, would follow suit. Certainly a possibility. If so, Notre Dame, a team that's independent, would certainly need to find games. ACC is a logical choice because they do play an ACC schedule. ACC teams on their schedule, they have an, an agreement with them with still being independent. These two teams are scheduled to face each other next time in 2024. They have other meetings set up, 2025 and beyond. With that schedule agreement I just mentioned. So good to see. I know people will be excited for that. These two teams going at it. Again, they played a number of huge games. Certainly has to be considered one of Miami's top rivals. Certainly outside the state, outside of Florida State and Florida. Notre Dame is right there. Based on their histories. And I know there's other schools as well. You know, I know I know people 
uh, the Ohio State rivalry that's that's come up from that 0-2 matchup. But just Notre Dame with that, the history, played each other a number of times, contrasting styles, and they played a number of huge games. So here we go. This is good for Miami, down to the 12. Looking to capitalize, getting in the red zone. Again, still going shotgun. And Derek looks to get the ball out to Jalen Knight. Good to see there. And I'm not surprised to see Jalen involved in the pass game. That's that, Those are the kind of skills he has where he can carry the ball. You saw him earlier in the return game. And now you're seeing him catching the ball in the offense. A multiple threat guy. Good skills, good speed, agility. Gives you different options to move him around a little bit. So third and seven here. Big play coming up. Derek takes his time, offensive line, good protection, and then finds Mike Harley over the middle. And I think those that's what you'll see with Mike. Catching the ball over the middle. He essentially just sat in a, a pocket there. Turned around, made a good catch, and got upfield just a little bit. But just a, a reliable target. He obviously can, you know, take slants or drags over the middle as well. But just that ability to make catches find pockets in the defense, set up and make key plays. I think those are things that you'll see. And certainly looking at this run right here with the way it's matched up. So they go Harley in motion. That was an interesting play call. I, I was just looking at the alignment there. If they could have just left Harley on the left, they might add an opportunity to score a touchdown. But that's okay. Good to see the creativity. A little short pass. I think you'll see those kind of things. Mark Pope involved with that as well, I would expect. Just to get the ball and some guys with speed and agility. And those guys, those two guys are certainly ones like that. There's number two, Don Chaney Jr. Trying to give him a look in these simulations. Here's a second and seven. Oh, nice play. I think he, that was Jeremiah Payton, 12 there. So they go pass interference. So they call a pass interference on Notre Dame, but it certainly looked like Jeremiah should have caught that. It stands out to me as Derek's throwing that on the run. That was a nice play. Kind of frees the defense a little bit, but then makes a quick read, try to get a touchdown. So Miami's got a great opportunity to get this early lead. Going four wide here. Jalen in the backfield. Jalen goes out to the right. And he gets a touchdown. You know what? And I I know it's only a simulation. And there's Jalen with the dance. But I know it's only a simulation. But I really like that play call. So you go four wide shotgun. Balance out the receivers on each side. Jalen's in the, in the backfield. Then they go ahead and move Jalen to the in motion they get him out there with the wide receivers basically what you're doing and you saw it they certainly took advantage of it but what you're doing is you're trying to get him out there quicker only needed a yard so you're trying to essentially start the route a little quicker and then he doesn't have as much room to gr to go and maybe create a mismatch and Derek has to get the ball out quick and that's not surprising to see either because if you guys watch those workouts over the summer when he was working out in Texas. Shout out to Select QB Athletics for all of the work he did there. But they certainly worked with him on the quick, getting the ball out quick. And you saw it right there. Especially when you're in shotgun. Especially when you only have a yard to go. You want to take advantage of it. And that was good to see. So Miami's offense gets off to a great start. Long drive, mixing in the run and pass. Derek's runs certainly highlighted the drive. And now we'll get a chance to see Miami's defense in action against a Notre Dame team that returns a really strong offensive line. Number of key guys there, but also a quarterback in Ian Book who had a successful year last year, over 3,000 yards. 
over 30 touchdown passes. So he's coming back for his senior year. And if these two teams, again, if these two teams face each other, I certainly think it would, everybody would be excited about it, but you can certainly see it would be a challenging game for Miami. And I want to talk about that 2017 matchup again. You know, there hasn't been a ton of huge games over the years, 15 years or so. I remember looking back on it, the big wins, big games. And this was definitely one of them. I think this, in my mind, tops the list. Like, just a, such a huge, important game for Miami. And again, with all the attention, all of the hype, and the best thing about all the hype is delivering. And you saw Notre Dame's offense, offensive line there, like I said. They turned a number of key guys, and then, you know, they got Jafar Armstrong. They've got some other running backs back. But just delivering in a big game, there's really nothing better because, you know, it's one thing to have all the hype, the, att the attention, the excitement before the game. Then you're playing at home, but you definitely want to deliver. And they certainly did, and that was a lot of fun. You guys are seeing Miami. If you guys have been watching these simulations, you see I was able to go ahead and get some number changes fixed. Made some adjustments there on those double numbers. You see Silvera, he's in his number one. And then Brooks in six, Huff in nine. So I want to make sure I clean that up a little bit for you guys. Third and four here. Got a catch there. Oh, the ball squirts loose. So that's Bubba Bolden, 21 in there on coverage. Makes a nice play. Really good play by Bubba there. That's 25, Braden Lindsey. Someone Notre Dame is certainly excited about as well. But that's a great play by Bubba. I'm very excited to see what he's going to be able to do. Again, he gets a year on his belt back after missing a year of action. Plays a little bit. It's his first year at Miami last year. Deals with an injury. But all that stuff's in behind him. He's he's a junior this year. I'm very excited to see what he's going to do. And there's Xavier Restrepo, freshman receiver in the return game. He's certainly in a battle, looking to find a role on the team. The four wide receivers seem to be pretty locked in. Mike Harley, Mark Pope, D. Wiggins, Jeremiah Payton, those four have separated themselves in my mind. And those will be Miami's four receivers. And then guys like Restrepo, Michael Redding III, Daz Warsham. Guys like that will be looking in that next group to improve, you know, get better, those kind of things, get their work in. There's number two. That was Don Cheney Jr. That's a nice catch by D. Wiggins right there. And just real quick, if you guys haven't checked it out, there's an article on InsideU.com for VIP subscribers on D. Wiggins, his workout with the NFL receiver, which I think is a big thing when guys do that. It's nothing against the Miami staff. They do a great job. It's just getting that extra teaching from someone in the league I think is always beneficial. That extra voice to take what's going on with the coaching staff and also add this extra element to someone's game I think is big so that's good for D Wiggins check that out VIP subscription actually on sale right now over at Inside the U so go ahead and take advantage of that sixty percent off anal subscription definitely would appreciate if you guys could go ahead and show your support there as well you guys have showed tons of support on this channel it's been fantastic and we're winding down in the first quarter here. Derek, really good performance. And I know some of you guys would like to see a little bit longer of a game. And I've done that in the past a little bit. But again, these are just sneak peeks, just quick looks. And maybe we could do some bigger stuff in the future. But again, just want to make sure we're taking a look at some good programs. If there's any other team you want to see, go ahead and drop in the comments. 
That was a great first quarter of action. I'm glad you guys checked it out. I want to hear what you think of this matchup. Would you like to see these two teams in action on the field again this season? But just want to thank again everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Check out InsideTheU.com. You can follow me on Twitter at InsideTheU. And take care.